Hello, hello, and welcome to another video. Today I have a special guest, Jesse. Jesse at Jesse GC underscore. Yeah. Jesse, who is new to motorsport, never done trying, motorsport photography at all. <laughs> will be trying to shoot with his A7 IV and top tier equipment with a whole bag of lenses and other fantastic accessories to use from, to use from, to use with. And I will be using this. A 20 year old DSLR that only shoots eight megapixels and all the kit lenses. And we'll see, answer the question once and for all, does gear matter or am I just gonna be really shit? So I guess stay tuned and see how we go. Alright, so we are here now at the first section at the end of the drag strip. So this is the run the wall part and this is where Jesse and I are going to do our first challenge. He's currently got my 7200 mounted on his A7 IV and I'll probably be using, I think it's a 14 to 45 kit lens on the Olympus E500. 8 megapixels of fury versus 24 megapixels and we'll see. Does gear really matter or have I uh, bitten off more than I can chew? So let's see what we get. Let's see what we can do with this wonderfully old camera. We are using the Olympus E500 8 megapixel camera from 2003 coupled with the amazing Olympus Digital 14 to 45 millimeter f3.5 to 5.6. But can I beat Jesse with his 7200 and his A7 IV? And we're live. We're recording. I got such a cool view. I love. I just love how it has the end of the camera. So it's almost like a, it's like a POV, like fucking gun yeah. game or something. Like quick, one shot. Yeah, and then just bam. Oh, here we go. Okay, what do we got? Where can you stand and where can't you stand? Uh, don't find yourself on the grass. Okay. And probably up to where that yellow, like that yellow bolide is. So probably a couple of meters away from the, the water barrier. But probably Show me where. Like here? It's probably as far as I would go. Okay. That's probably it. So stay here. Sometimes I let you go closer, but then other times you'll get someone running along going, Oi, fucking yeah. you're gonna fucking die if you stand here, mate. Yeah, it's the, the biggest annoyance is cars that are suddenly white, then black, then white, then black, because they fuck the exposure. Maybe I'll try them. Shots going. Can't tell. I think they're all overexposed. Oh, they look, they look like I think they're ex overexposed though. You know, you know the one thing that is irking me the most though, Jesse. The level of smoke. No, no. no. When you review your photos, you can do this, can't you? <laughs> you can't. I can't. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm going through it like actually. And you can see the exposure. Yeah. And uh, I think you've also got a histogram you can look at, if I'm not mistaken. I don't, use I don't even know if this has a histogram. <gasps> it does! Alright, so we've done a bit of shooting down here at the drag strip and I'm already starting to notice a few limitations with this old camera. Namely, the continuous autofocus is... The continuous autofocus is not really continuous, it's just a series of single autofocuses, one after another. The lens itself has seemingly decent sharpness maybe but the biggest thing is i can't actually see any of the photos on the back screen it's so dull and in such bright sunlight it is impossible to tell if my photos are in focus out of focus or if i even took the photo at all so 
this could be a very interesting day because I have no idea how to fix any of my shots because I can't tell what I'm doing wrong. So maybe Jesse's in with a bit of luck here. All righty. So that is a wrap for shooting down here with the fucking Olympus E500 and kit lenses. I haven't even used all of my lenses for it. I've used the two that it came with, which was like the 14 to 45 and the 4150, both variable aperture lenses, both made of plastic. <laughs> so build quality, you know, is fine. And the only advantage I did give myself was the use of a polarizer. But then I nerfed myself by giving it to Jesse. So... <laughs> did I take yours? I didn't realize that. It's still that. on your camera. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't give that back. So, yeah. Decent shots, I think. They, some of them felt decent. I can't actually tell you because I can't actually see the screen. Because the glare is too bad. And it has about the light of a candle. So that's not going to help. So... I guess when we jump back into post, I'll edit them up and we'll see how they go. And hopefully if Jesse's nice, he'll send me some of the photos he took for a comparison. I feel like I took some okay shots. Like for my first time, definitely. He some seemed alright. Some of them I reckon, I reckon are there. I reckon we got some stuff. Budding motorsport photographer, I reckon. Have I converted him? We'll see. But we'll see whether or not gear really does matter or whether I have just taken some real shit photos. <laughs> but anyway, we'll see you back at home and when we go through them in post and uh, see how they turn out. Till then, see you later. Bye bye. I'm a little teapot short. <laughs> Welcome back. We are back home now from Calder Park. So if you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen that we put up a poll on my Instagram story of three of my best images and three of Jesse's best images. And we put it to a vote to see who had the better images. But before we go through that, I just thought I'd run you through some of the images that Jesse captured and then some of the images that I captured. And we'll talk a bit about the difficulties with the camera, the pros of using the kit camera and all sorts of other things. So let's jump on in, not to Lightroom, but to photo mechanic. We'll start with Jesse's images. Now, all of these images are already exported and they've already been edited. So these aren't raw out of camera. These are edited images. So let's jump in to the images. As you can see, Jesse's gone for very much a filmic grainy sort of warm edit. I actually really like the edit. We've got a couple of photos of what I think are a Volvo. We've got this photo here. And then these are probably some of my uh, favorite shots. Always when you get a car spinning out and you manage to get a pan with it, they become good shots. There's a series of, I think, four images there. You've got you know, the rear wheels still spinning. You've got the front wheels completely locked. You've got the entirety of the car in focus and you've got the motion blur. I can't say that I've got a shot like that. So my metaphorical hat goes off to you, Jesse. That is a good shot. I would say from the 91 images that you've sent there, I'd say I'd be happy with maybe 85 of those 91. And for a first time shooting motorsport, my metaphorical hat goes off to you. We'll jump across to my images. Now this is all 171 of my images. That's gonna be the first upside of shooting with an older DSLR. You don't have the high speed burst. So you can't really rack up high shutter count. This is as fast as it will shoot. And when you're shooting motorsport where the cars are coming past you, you'll, maybe, you'll be lucky to get two or three frames before the cars pass you. And of those, sometimes you're lucky if even one of them is in focus. So with that, we'll jump over to my images. Prepare to laugh because most of them are utter trash. The first thing that I'll say that you immediately notice with these is that the dynamic range in them is not great. I think this camera has like eight stops of dynamic range. Whereas by comparison, my Sony and the Sony Jesse was shooting on, I think is like 12 and a half, 13 stops. So there's a lot of leeway in exposure. If you get it slightly over, slightly under, the raw files are corrected. Now, I did shoot all of my images in raw and these are all unedited. You can already see the first couple of images struggling a bit with the metering. So they look about a stop under. The focus you can already start to see is 
not quite keeping up. So I'm focusing on the front of the car and I'm sort of, by the time it's taking the photo, the focus has sort of wandered back because it's not truly continuous. It's more like a series of single autofocus. You get the beep and then it will go again and then it will beep and then it will go again. You miss focus. And then there's a whole bunch of misses. That's kind of all right. I got sort of the tail end of the car, but I like the composition. If I move the composition to be more like that, this is at 62 millimeters. So this is 120 millimeter equivalent at 1 25th of a second and the whole front of the car is tech sharp. This is kind of like the one in a million shot. This is this is pushing everything very, very, very hard and just being lucky that the car is sitting in a good spot, that you've just panned it right, the settings are right, and it just works. You can be a professional who's done this for 10 years and these kind of shots are still rare. The fact that I got this and the fact that I was lucky enough to get a shot like this during the competition, realistically, is probably the only reason why I even stand a chance against Jesse in this competition. Those are my images. Now, I guess the point that you've all been waiting for with this competition to answer the question finally does gear matter these were the images that we put up in the grid and the numbers associated with them keep in mind we got 50 votes in total the first image which is nate atkinson's hands out the window the smoke trail one of my favorite images that got nine votes out of 50. second picture also jesse's picture of the two cars coming around together but this image got eight votes the third image which was my image and one that i was really kind of proud of that got two votes fourth image and thank god for the miracle of that one shot this image got 26 votes and number five another image i'm really happy with that also got two votes so all of my votes are on picture number four so finally number six which was jesse's shot again of the car pivoting round at the end and it got three votes so to tally the votes up and put them up on the screen I got 30 votes and Jesse got 20 votes out of the total in 50. What it does point out first and foremost is that gear, no matter if it's 20 years old, no matter if you're using the bog standard kit lens that it came with, you can take fantastic motorsport images. Is it going to be a pain in the ass? Absolutely, it's going to be a pain in the ass. Is it going to take time to hone your craft to get better and to work your way around the disadvantages of a camera system? Of course it will. But it doesn't mean that if all you can afford is a 20 year old E500 and its kit lens or a 600D, a 1200D, whatever it might be, you can still take great motorsport images. Does gear matter? Yes and no. No, you can take fantastic images with whatever you've got with your phone, with a 20 year old DSLR and a plastic kit lens. Does having gear make shooting easier? Yes, of course it does. There's a reason why professionals use professional grade gear. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It was really fun to get to bring someone new to motorsport into the world, show them what it's about and have a little fun, lighthearted competition to see how gear performs. If you haven't already, go check out Jesse on Instagram at jessegc underscore. You can also find him on YouTube as well at jessegc. I'll put the link to both his Instagram and his YouTube in the description down below. Go check him a follow. He's an amazing portrait photographer. If you're into seeing portraits and model photography, go check out Jesse. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. And who knows, we might make this a trend and have a bit of a competition series where I bring in new photographers and maybe even some of you subscribers down to an event and we have these little competitions to see who outperforms who. Leave a comment down below telling me what you liked about the video, what you want to see in future. And with that said, with that done, with this video all wrapped up, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.